All right, my friends, we're going to talk about how inflation destroys returns, all right? And we're going to bust out our old reliable, the PVC pointer with a green tape right there, the PVC pointer. I get to, when I first introduced old PVC, I had a couple guys say, Rah, PVC. <laughs> There's no other YouTube channel that you're going to get in some dude's basement with a $10 shower thing from Lowe's and a PVC pipe. No other one. This is the only place you're going to get this. So enjoy. All right. So I'm reading this book here, The Origins of the fin of Financial Crises, I guess, uh, by George Cooper, The Origins of Financial Crises. Um <laughs> a couple things that jumped when I got the books like I don't know if I want to read it because we have Fareed Zakaria a great analysis on how we got to this financial mess from CNN uh, then we have the uh, Los Angeles Times uh, <laughs> these are the people on the back who are giving it uh, props so Fareed Zarika, whatever the hell his name is uh, and then we have Newsweek which is just, it's just Timely, a blueprint for understanding and fixing this mess. It's almost like boilerplate, the mess. And then the Financial Times, which I like okay. But at the end of the day, you got Newsweek, the LA Times, and CNN. That, that's not who I'm looking for for in-depth analysis of financial stuff. But I mean, it is okay. it's, 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 it's good. It's good. It's, uh, it's, it's okay. Let's put it that way. You can get it yourself. I'll put a link in the show notes. It, it's not a long book, you know, only 100 odd pages or something. Um. He's obviously big on Keynes. Actually, I don't mind the book. I, I don't want to sound like I'm minimizing it. There are a lot of other books I think you should get. But if you want to get it, more power too. He, he's big on Keynes and the fact he's got uh, Fareed or whatever his name is. But he did have a good point here. And, and I, I have been remiss in pointing this out for a while about inflation. Because I, I am of the idea that the U.S. You know, I vacillate on this, man. I vacillate on this. Maybe I'll share this with a different video. Well, no, let me just share it with you. Um, Russia is a basket case. China is going. China, the commies are on their last legs. Trump's got them by the, you know what? Um, and uh, and if Trump wins re-election, I don't think I think it's going to be a whole different economy a few years from now. I just read in Guangdong they're protesting. Now this isn't the Hong Kong protest against the commies. This was about a NIMBY. They didn't want the. Uh, uh, some kind of uh, I forgot incinerator or something like that put in their uh, you know in their town. Uh, if you're at all familiar with Guangdong, that was a place where um, oh, was the premier. Ah, I forgot the the premier in the '80s, the, the capitalist kind of guy. Uh, he promoted essentially these enterprise zones in parts of China, and Guangdong uh, was 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 just j jumped through the roof in terms of the ability for it to make money. It was nuts. And, uh, and that, it still is to this day. Of course, now we got this new uh, Mao wannabe. Man, I forgot the guy's name. Uh, the the premier who is a capitalist guy. I forgot. But anyway, anyway. So Guangdong. The fact they're protesting. And again, and I use some of the slogans of the Hong Kong protesters. That was good. Um, I just it's interesting. And, and the facts are, Chinese economy will go the way of the Russians, will go the way of the Cubans, the Venezuelans, everywhere is exercised. Will go the way of Sweden until Sweden pulled his head out of his butt and recognized their socialistic tendencies were, were wrong. Now, it's still a big government safety net, but they've got a lot of privatization over the last 20 years in Sweden. And China's going to do the same thing. There's, 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 you've got to take the fork in the road. What are you going to take? You're going to take the commie way and everybody will be dead, or you're going to take the free market way and everyone will deal with prosperity. And, uh, and I think Trump has got them by the, you know what. Uh, and then you look at Europe. Europe's just a basket case. I mean, the, the population is dying off. It's just, it's not a growth mentality in Europe. So in some ways, I sit there, I still, and I say, man, the U.S. is still the only game in town. It's like after the great uh, World War II, when everybody else was decimated and the U.S. was the only, we were the, the only game in town. And you look not due to wars, but due to mismanagement of economies and the U.S. being the big daddy of, of being able to protect the, the Western world where they didn't have to spend on defense and whatnot, and they could just live in their coffee shops and whatnot with knowing that Big Brother, i.e. the U.S., would protect them. Well, those days are gone, and now their population is getting too old. They're bringing in people who don't want anything to do with the European way of life, and uh, it's a clash. And because of that, it's going to be it's a, it's going to be a basket case and will continue to be said basket case. Um, 
You know, you can read books like Camp of the Saints. Uh, you know, people say, oh, it's, you know, it's the 1970s, so it's some racist terminology in there. Just be advised. Uh, but, there, you know, uh, a guy, uh, Submission by Michael, I can't pronounce his last name. It's a good book, Submission. Uh, it's just interesting. We don't know where this is going to go, but it's certainly not going into a, a uh, to competing with the U.S. It's not. So when you look at deflation and you look at inflation and you think about the U.S., you, you can't help but be, say, you know, the U.S. is still the, the only game in town by far. And it will probably continue to be, uh, especially if Trump wins re-election and can solidify uh, his free market uh, Main Street uh, economic interest. Not globalist, but Main Street economic interest. And, I, and if he does, I think it's, it's game on for the U.S. by far. Um, but anyway, so at the end of the day, I haven't paid much heed to inflation. But anyway, so reading this guy's book, and he made a good point. And I used to talk about this a lot, and I haven't much anymore. All right, so let's how, show you how inflation eats up returns. All right, so here we got three scenarios. We got interest rate at 2% with no inflation. We got interest rate at 4% with 2% inflation. And we got interest rate at 6% with 4% inflation. All right, with me so far. We got taxes at 25% across the board. All right, so again, interest at 2, no inflation. Interest at 4, 2% 2 inflation. So inflation is always two percentage points lower than interest rates. Interest at 6, 4% inflation. Now, unfortunately, People think, they say, okay, I, I take interest minus inflation and pay tax on that. Interest minus inflation, pay tax on that. Interest minus inflation, pay taxes on that. So in this case, it's always 2% my net return out of inflation, and I get taxed 25% on that next on that net of two. 25% uh, on that net, yeah, net of two. So in this case, your total returns would be all the same. It'd be 1.5% because you've got two, two, and two. Minus tax is one, uh, which is 25%. So your net return be 1.5. That's not how this works, though. This is this is where the the system is so stacked against the long-term investors. Uh, let's see that. All right. What happens is you don't pay taxes on the net. You pay taxes on the gross. All right. So in here, you got 25% of two, which is 1.5. Here you got 25% of four, which is what's that, three, right? Uh, yeah, three. Here you got 25% of six. I don't know what that is. So let me get my uh, calculator. I don't have my calculator. Oh, yeah, I do. Sweet. Let me just make sure I got 25% of six is, was that one? Uh, I don't know what it is. So six minus 25%, 4.5. All right, there you go. So here we pay tax on two. We pay tax on four, we pay tax on six. So let me just make sure my 25% of four is correct. Minus 25%, yeah, three, okay. All right, so that's our after tax return. Because we don't pay tax on the net of inflation, we pay tax on the gross interest base that we're getting. All right, but now watch this. Inflation comes in, nothing. So you got 1.5 net. Inflation comes in, 25, uh, 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 two, excuse me, not 25, two, ah, two, one. Inflation comes in 4.5%. So as you can see, net of taxes and inflation this is the better return, 1.5, uh, 2% nets us 1.5. This, even though we got the most interest, is the worst because inflation was so much higher. And that is how inflation destroys returns. And this is also how inflation destroys uh, ca why capital gains not being adjusted for inflation is a significant, horrific a destroyer of wealth because inflation is eating away your returns each and every year simply by the fact that inflation is increasing the cost of purchasing power for other things out there. It is, uh, look at that. I mean, you would think this is three times the rate of return of that. And yet it's, I mean, it's three, but net of inflation taxes, this is three times the net of the rate of return of that. Uh, it's, isn't that crazy? You got two, four, six, six percent interest in this scenario, three times. 
and yet you're getting net of taxes and inflation, you are getting three times the rate of return on the one that was three times less in interest. That's how inflation, my friends, kills taxes. So we're in a low inflationary environment with low interest rates. That's better than being in a high inflationary environment with high interest rates. So again, I'll put a link to the show notes of this book. There are other better books you can get, but if you know if you're looking for some reading, uh, you know it's, it's, it's worthwhile. I just uh, again, I think there's some better ones for you. All right, we'll see you.